Good morning, everybody. I would like to welcome everybody in Houston, Santiago of Chile, to good morning, the people in Mar del Plata and Tucumán uh, who are in Argentina. We would like to thank Universidad Santo Tomás in Houston for the possibility of uh, having organized this webinar. It's actually three panels, uh, three different timetables on the spirit of innovation. ICUSTA, the network of uh, universities based on the thinkings of Santo Tomas, of St. Thomas, that brings together 29 universities in the five continents, uh, and out of which uh, the three universities that are participating today, we have Santo Tomas, Houston, we have uh, Santo Tomas, Chile, we have uh, Santo Tomas, Pasta, Plata, Argentina, and also in the north, Santo Tomás de Aquino, also in Argentina. All of these universities have decided to organize an event that will allow us to engage and to talk about innovation in different aspects in each of our institutions. Uh, given that, that uh, timetables are different, uh, time zones are different for everybody, what we uh, will do is that we'll we will send all of the uh, universities uh, the recordings from these three panels so that they can be also disseminated at the universities uh, that have not been able to be with us uh, because of a time zone difference. So I want to thank the president of uh, St. Thomas University from Houston, Mr. Richard Lutz for his uh, ongoing and permanent uh, support to our activities and to this one in particular. I want to thank also the presidents uh, of the other universities, Maria Olivia Recard from Santo Tomas uh, de Chile, also Juan Carlos Mena from Universidad Fasta from Argentina, and the president also from Universidad del Norte Santo Tomas de Aquino from Tucumán. I would like to leave you with Mr. Patrick Wook, from Universidad Santo Tomas uh, from Houston. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for that very kind and uh, beautiful in, uh, introduction, to Roberto. And uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping uh, to give people uh, some background, you know, to just uh, you know, good rules to follow. And then uh, introduce a little bit about the, the speakers today and tell a little bit about the topic uh, matter that we're discussing. So people will have a, a good context in which to understand uh, th this discussion of, we call it the, the spirit of innovation, really looking at the spirit of St. Thomas and looking at you know, the, 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 the fusion between the, the, the spirit of which we find in our Catholic re uh, religion and in the innovation of uh, the, 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 the physical world. Uh, before we start, uh, for those people who have not uh, selected your language, please look down at the bottom right of your bar, and there should be a place where it shows interpretation. Uh, please do select if uh, you know if you prefer to, to Spanish. Please prefer to select Spanish, or if you prefer to have English today, select that one. Or as uh, was told to me earlier, if you want to practice both of them, you can do just leave it off. So, uh, matters your uh, uh, your taste. Uh, just a few housekeeping things additional um, to mention. If you have a question, uh, just to make it easier, we're going to answer all the questions at the end, uh, a time being, because of course we have a lot of very good information we want to discuss today. So time being, we'll have the questions at the end. Um, I will help moderate, but we have such great speakers today. I'm sure we will have very lively discussions. So probably not very much need for me. Uh, but anyways, if you do leave a question, I will bring it up at the end. Please leave your question in chat. I will, re, I will be checking chat uh, consistently and I will bring up your question at the end, okay? Uh, be, of course, be respectful, keep mute when uh, you're not speaking, you know, to uh, give honor to the speakers that we have today, okay? And uh, in saying that, I want to introduce uh, uh, the three speakers that we'll be having today. Uh, Patricia Noda is the Vice President of Communication and Community Engagement at the University of St. Thomas, Chile. It's very good to have you here, uh, Patricia. Would you just say hello? There's very nice, very nice. <laughs> That's a good wave. 
Uh, sí, por supuesto, no. Muchísimas gracias por la invitación. Oh, no, sure. Thank you, uh, thank you for the invitation, and I'm very happy to participate in this engaging instance uh, between all of these higher education uh, universities uh, and institutions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Patricia. Uh, Roberto Giordano, uh, he is the Dean of the Engineering School at the University of Asta, Argentina. Uh, Roberto, would you like to say a few words before we begin? Well, thank you, Patrick. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to share this meeting with the colleagues from the universities that are part of the ICUSTA network. I hope that it will be a fruitful session and productive in terms of its debate. Thank you very much for your, for your, for your, for your kind and thoughtful words. And uh, Thomas Baer uh, is joining us from the, our University of St. Thomas here in Houston. He is the Director of, of Integrated Humanities, uh, Director of Master of Liberal Arts, Director of Social, uh, uh, Social Science and Justice Studies, and Associate Professor and the Chair of the Department of History. Wow, a lot of, a lot of uh, seats you have there, uh, Thomas. Would you like to share a few words, sir? Yeah, uh, well, thank you, Patrick. I, I'm glad I could find time with all these responsibilities to uh, be with you today. Uh, I'm looking forward to a very uh, fruitful discussion. Thank you very much for your, for your words, Tom. And uh, just to give you a little bit of the topic matter that we're talking about today in this uh, session is about communities and collaboration. Something that is very dear uh, to my heart is collaboration. You know, we have, uh, as in academia, as in, in Houston, we have everyone doing their individual things. And one of the great things that uh, our president has, has led is taking down these silos and everyone working together and collaborating as a university. And an example of that collaboration is today is with all the universities sharing our, our minds and our thoughts on this very great top, uh, subject matter. And, and very much, thank you very much, President, for leading the charge in this uh, area. Um, so also this we will cover is topics in regard to communities like sustainability, which is also a very big issue that's coming about. Diversity, which is a huge issue, of course, here in Houston. Um, cultural awareness and also innovation in regard to collaboration between not only within the university, but within the surrounding community. And I'm sure there'll be other more lively topics along here. That being said, um, what I wanna do is turn it over to the, our president, uh, Dr. Ludwig, to say the initial, the initial prayer for us to begin this beautiful uh, event. Uh, thank you, Patrick. And um, I just wanna say uh, hello and uh... Uh, buenos dias, buenas tardes, depending on where you are. And um, it's great to be with all of you today for this important work. I want to especially thank Roberto also for always gathering us as a Icusta family and uh, my uh, brother and sister presidents and rectors. It's always a privilege to serve alongside them. So as we begin today's important work and continue the great work of Ikusta around the globe. Uh, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious Father, send your Spirit into our hearts. We recognize, we know, we feel the love, and we are given that love to share with others. Salvation history is a walk through your caring and loving embrace. It is a walk from the Garden of Eden to that shining city on the hill, an ever progressive march of our human family in a loving embrace of the loving God. Give us the wisdom, strength, and courage to seek out those innovations that serve our family, our human family and keep us always mindful that you send guides to us, saints. We especially at the University of St. Thomas in Houston call upon the intercession of St. Maximilian Kolbe, a saint of the last century that gave his life to save another, but perhaps more importantly, his witness to innovation, to evangelization, 
and to love that spread throughout the world is an inspiration always to us. We ask St. Thomas Aquinas intercession for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, President. That was very beautiful. Thank you. Very, very touching. And I think that is the beginning and a beautiful prayer to begin this great discussion on innovation and in particular in dealing with collaboration. And if you do not mind, uh, I'm going to uh, pick on Patricia since she was here the first. Uh, if you would mind to maybe start off you, I know you had a few nice slides there, and maybe we could share those, and we'd be a very good place to start this uh, panel and this great discussion ahead of us. I see. Very well. Can you hear me well? Okay, and you can see the presentation. Uh, presentation is off. Yeah, no, no está compartiendo pantalla en este minuto. Un segundo. Ahí sí. Perfect. En modo presentación, Roberto, ayuda. Abajito donde está el Ahí Ahora, sí. perfecto, perfecto, perfecto. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, thank you so much for having invited me. And I know that we don't have a lot of time, so I would like to start just by making a brief introduction of uh, uh, St. Thomas here in Santiago of Chile. It is uh, three uh, in, uh, facilities, one a uh, technical center, and a uh, professional institute is a four-year college, and also the university. And altogether, we have 85,000 students uh, in campuses that go from the far north to the far south, Arica far north, Punta Arenas far south. Now, it is important uh, to say this. I wanted to talk about the social role, the social approach that we have as part of our DNA. And I'm going to change the word DNA for spirit. The social role has always been part of St. Thomas's spirit. Uh, St. Thomas here in Chile as an institution began with uh, this approach. And we have an education that's based on values and that we want to have as a hallmark for our students. The programs uh, that we deliver are also part of the social area. And we believe that bringing this uh, social approach in part as a part of the learning process, uh, having this learning within real context, it becomes uh, a memorable, unforgettable experience. So for this, we have social innovation as the strategic focus of a policy that engages us with the environment. We have a higher education new law here in Chile that establishes three missions. One, teaching, one, the mission on research, and also engaging with the environment, uh, with Explicit. the community. It's a community engagement, which is part of a new role. These three types of institutions that, that we have as part of the uh, organization. So this is the focus of the community engagement that we have. And this is the definition that we have uh, selected for social innovation. And this is part of collaboration. It's a collective search, a joint search of new solutions focused on social challenges, in particular, those that have to do with improving the lives of the vulnerable communities. This has been the focus since 2018. That's what we have been dedicated to in our community engagement and social innovation, taking the Oslo definition, can be a process, can be a practice, but it's always two 
ways, this is a concept that's being used quite often, engaging with the environment that has to provide mutual benefits. Also, much in line with the sustainable development goals from the United Nations. We need to make this evident. We have to show that with this community engagement, we are contributing to the different SDGs. Now, in this sense, I wanted to share with you that this social innovation for us uh, has these elements that have to do with the topic for this seminar. It is innovation, but it is with a co-creation. We have projects and courses that are funded by the institution, but they must go from joint diagnosis, joint problem resolution, joint evaluation, joint measurements for everybody. If there is no impact on society, then it's not innovation. We are undertaking a pathway since 2018 in this journey trying to nurture social innovation with an institutional policy, with a model that I will only quickly touch upon. We have this focus, this approach where we are leading the social innovation network in higher education in Chile, and we already have some uh, institutions that are belonging to it. So we want that this kind of discussions that are taking place in ICUSTA to take place in Chile as a whole. And in this collaboration, we are going to have to, or we're planning on collecting the information where we as a higher education institutions with joint work and collaboration, we can contribute for the development of this network. We have a workshop of well, it, it's held on a yearly basis, uh, and we have been training quite a lot of students on this uh, social innovation workshop that has a focus on trying to solve uh, social challenges, and also this which is more innovative too. Not only are we declaring social innovation at an extracurricular level, but it has also been included as part of the curricular. So there are subjects that they have to see that, so that social innovation is present throughout the programs when they go to the vocational college. We do have a focus because in order to create impact, we need a focus. And here it is the elderly population throughout the country, far north to far south. So that's the presentation that I wanted to share with you. I've got a video, but I know that I really don't have time. So maybe we, I can just leave the floor open for the next presenter. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. It was uh, very uh, beautiful and addresses, I think, one of the big issues that we see uh, in our community and around the world is addressing and allowing, and I don't want to call it elderly, but people who are older, as we are all getting a little older, um, and making them continue to be a part, um, not just a people that we are caretakers of, but making them a part of the, the, the solution of the future. And I think, I think there's a lot to be learned in regard to social innovation and in, not only that, but inclusion on some of the people who have helped create this beautiful world that we live in. And they want to continue to be a contributor in this world. And I think that is a very beautiful thing that you do is by addressing uh, really uh, talking about the importance of the, the I don't wanna say once again, elderly, but older people, that um, you know, it uh, it really brings them back into the discussion. It brings them back into the equation, and it allows them to continue to contribute, but maybe in a way that is in less of forcing and going out and doing. Now there are a poor portion of maybe mentoring and supporting our younger uh, population and being a part of that equation as well. So I think what you're talking about, Patricia, and please excuse me if I miss all of the depth that you create, but I think it is a very beautiful thing that you're doing. Would anyone like to, Tom or Roberto, would you like to comment or to share anything uh, along those topics? You're still on mute, Tom. Excelente la propuesta 
y en el well, caso, I think that it's an excellent uh, plan. And we're going to do something actually similar, but we're going to face it on the development of technologies, technologies in the broadest sense of the word that uh, Patricia has presented, and also with uh, trying to create a social impact, uh, as Patricia well said. So we are very well aligned and walking more or less along the same pathway. And, uh... Hi, I would just add, uh, I really consider the importance of, uh, of practical learning and uh, problem focused curriculum to, to be really an important key. Uh, I think it was always an important aspect of educating the whole person. Uh, but uh, nowadays, it's even more perhaps uh, to the point that, that we need st our students to get real world experience. <laughs> Uh, so that, that's a part of my program also that I'll talk about. Uh, Tom, do you want to maybe share a little bit about uh, your program? Maybe uh, would help to, because I know Roberto talked a little bit about technology, but maybe you could elaborate a little bit about how your program. Well, your I'm, I'm ready to go. My presentation will be on that. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Roberto, you have some thoughts as well, or would you want to, to share? I know you're, you are not a part of the moderation, but I'll want to bring you in. I think you have a great insights as well. I'll, either Giordano or La Fontaine. No, no soy parte de los moderadores. Perdona, no soy parte de los moderadores. Oh, yeah, I, I know that I'm not part of the moderator, but uh, I do believe that there is something important to highlight here, as Patricia said it too. Innovation and social innovation has to be a part of the DNA in the spirit. I loved that you used the word uh, uh, spirit in the spirit of our schools. Our, the, the Custa schools uh, have a duty and the duty is to contribute to communities, well, to our students and to teach them so that in the future, they can insert themselves uh, in their community actively and social innovation without any doubt uh, means that our mission becomes flesh and blood through these students uh, and then our mission gets to the communities. We're all involved in this. Uh, social innovation is uh, Patricia's vision and I want to say this very clearly. It, it is uh, her vision focusing community engagement towards something in particular because you really cannot address everything and you have to start focusing and social innovation and out of is tremendously important, at least in our country. And I'm absolutely sure that in Argentina in, and, and in Texas, or maybe in the whole of the USA too, why not? But when we work with students, uh, students that come from a very highly high effort uh, communities. They're working with loans. Uh, maybe next year they will be studying totally for free with the corresponding subsidy. Obviously, obviously, social innovation has got to be a part of the curriculum. Patricia has uh, raised her virtual hand. Yes, uh, thank you, Roberto. You, now, given this conversation, I wanted to share with you something that Patrick uh, touched upon. Within the projects uh, that we have been supporting, which is about 100 projects altogether, the ones that have had the most success are those that bring different generations together. We have projects where the elderly is mentoring they have become open books, life stories. For example, we want to teach values like inclusion, non-discrimination, and we've taken lives, some of their lives, the elderly, and we've shared that through narratives, through stories, children's stories. And these children's stories are being taught in schools in the city of Valdivia, four or five year olds. So for them to know that this is for real, and then they get to know the person who lived that story. So this cross-generational interaction is something that's giving wonderful results. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much for sharing. It's absolutely beautiful. And I, I really enjoy 
the idea that we're sharing not just knowledge but experiences. And I think, uh, I think uh, Roberto Giordano, he had talked about technology in, in some regard earlier on, and I'm sorry we, we, we kind of cut you off there, but could you talk a little bit about technology and, and how that is, a, is, is an application? Because I think there's a really great discussion here with technology and social, like how they're interacting with each other in regard to collaboration and how we live. And I think one of the things that you talked about earlier on, uh, Roberto, is about technology. Could you maybe elaborate? Well, I will address that when I deliver my presentation, but taking as a starting point, I can talk about an instrument from the Ministry of Science and Technology from my country that is called Technological Social Development Project. Uh, this is a technological development project which has been certified by the Ministry of Science and Technology that has social impact uh, that is tangible, that has been measured. So this assumes the inclusion of social actors uh, to the process of the development of technology, which in the end translates into a co-building of knowledge uh, with the participation of the society, those that have been affected are those that are interested in an answer who really don't have a good technological knowledge, but who know what the issue or the problem is. So in this cohabiting, in this joint work, uh, knowledges come together, techniques come together. And technique is the connecting thread there that strengthens these social relationships that become firstly in mutual interest relationships, then in convenient relationships with mutual benefits, and in the end, trust interinstitutional relationships. These trust relationships between institutions create synergies that in turn create a whole network, a whole mesh of the co-building of knowledge and innovation. So in this sense, our university is a benchmark in the country. It is the first private university in our country to lead this whole bank of technological uh, projects with social impact. And we have had sustainable experience, not only in engineering, but in all the disciplines, inclusion, including interdisciplinary projects between different schools at the university. And I will try to summarize that in one of the examples that I will give you in my presentation. If you would like, uh, Robert, thank you very much, by the way, for sharing. That was very uh, thoughtful of you. If you would like to do your presentation now, I would. I think we would love to see it. Uh, I, I believe you can share it. If you would like to go ahead, this is a good time to bring it. Now we're just dis discussing that topic. De acuerdo, Patrick. Muchas gracias. Están viendo la presentación. Yes, perfect, Patrick. Yeah, that's it, it's a good point for me. Do, can you see the, the, my my perfect. presentation? Perfect. Esta presentación lleva okay, so this presentation is entitled uh, Building Micro Innovation Ecosystems uh, Through techno Social Technological Development Projects, a space for collaboration, co-building of knowledge and innovation. So it's a social technological development project, as I was saying. We have officially acknowledged the technological development with social impact as part of this technological and scientific system in our country. There is knowledge, there is transfer of technology, there's applied research on the one hand, development of technology, and also engagement. These are all elements that participate in our teaching, and it includes a cognitive innovation, knowledge that has been developed in order to solve a practical problem. Four criteria, novelty, relevance, importance, and demand. The players and the relationships that be in our type of projects are these. 
on the one hand, we have an executing entity. Normally, that's the university, the one that has the technological knowledge there. There is an also a demanding entity. Entity that, an entity that requests a problem to be solved, another entity that will adopt, that will receive the solution and will implement it in order to see whether the problem has been solved, and then a financing entity, in some cases more than one, a financing entity that sustains uh, the project in many cases it is the university itself now the problem which is a real problem from the real world that any institution may have uh, let's see in terms of knowledge uh, we can see it like the seed the seed of knowledge it is the common denominator of all of these entities it is shared when the mo when the project is only beginning but then these entities start engaging start contributing each with their own particular knowledge and then create a technological solution which is in terms of uh, knowledge Space, something that's a lot richer, that's a lot bigger and broader than the problem, which ends up becoming the co-produced, co-built knowledge uh, by all the players, by all the actors. This new knowledge, uh, this co-produced, co-built knowledge uh, uh, becomes a ca capability, becomes into a development potential and therefore a potential solution for new projects, for new issues and that is that is not only for the actors within the system but also beyond that these relationships between the different uh, stakeholders in the project have collaboration knowledge is co-built and innovation takes place the knowledge that has been uh, made uh, together adds value to the solution so that's why i said that there is a cognitive uh, contribution and not a professional solution that maybe they could have gotten through a, a consultant company and that makes it a very original there is knowledge that is produced specifically based on a local issue on a local problem and when that knowledge is applied it exceeds it goes beyond the stakeholders that are participating and it uh, creates a general interinstitutional mesh that keeps on growing in society and that also sets up uh, uh, R and D capabilities uh, for all the actors. When these projects uh, take place, uh, the recurrence uh, between the different actors uh, create a positive rising spiral that strengthens uh, their capabilities, uh, thus establishing what we have called a co-production, co-innovation, micro-ecosystem. This is an ecosystem that grows, brings in new researchers, capitalizes upon the knowledge that is produced, involves new people, and creates, therefore, new capacities. So knowledge, ecosystem, all of that scales, and therefore the potential that it has also scales up. Now, putting this into an example, let me start by sharing with you part of the mission of our institution, the FASTA University, which says it wants to become, it wants to provide university answers to the needs of the Argentina population and also the perspectives in terms of human development, uh, uh, production, social and sustainable development for the country. That is to say, this is this is a part of our institution, part of our DNA as a school. So the need of the university to give responses and help to the community is conveyed through these kind of projects. So in just two minutes, let me share with you one example, which is the technological research and development lab or called InfoLab and how it has contributed to the micro ecosystem in forensics research in our country. In this graph, basically what you can see, the researchers that started joining our lab since 2007, to date. You can see that every year we started in a lab with only 
five researchers and another five came in in 2008, so on and so forth. In 2012, uh, we incorporated six new ones uh, from other institutions, from other universities. In 2014, one from a different uh, school, which are the ones in Origins, uh, and so on and so forth. We bring in new researchers. Uh, if we look at it uh, with uh, from an accumulated uh, approach. Uh, we had five in 2007 and today it's more than 150 researchers and actors involved in research. 54 of our own, 11 from other schools but from our university and 87 are uh, associates uh, but from other organizations from the social sector. Seen from the ecosystem point of view and in terms of stakeholders is also accumulated in this graph. You can see how the first group of researchers that started in 2007, that included two more in 2012, until now, it has taken us to an innovation ecosystem in forensic informatics of a national scope that brings together 16 different entities on this particular topic that works mostly on the campus of forensic informatics and also applying informatics to all forensic sciences. In also, and I agree with Patricia, in everything that has to do with the application of uh, uh, technology for the prevention of uh, cyber uh, crime, including early childhood, er elderly population, etc. So, in a nutshell, this is the experience that I wanted to share with you on how we can create uh, micro innovation ecosystems from the relationships, the trust relationships and the development of technology. So here you have my contact information if you wanted to get in touch with me and thank you so much. Roberto, that was fabulous. I really enjoyed it. And thank you very much for sharing on how you're doing uh, new technology innovation uh, there. And I think one of the, the topics that I see consistently across our, our brothers or sisters university here is this uh, topic of co-creation. You know, it's, it's no longer a part of, uh, you know, that we're responsible, right? What we're saying to uh, everyone, and this is correct, is that we're responsible to the community and the community is responsible to us. And there should be a joining of this relationship between the two. And I think one of the brilliant things that you've pointed out is when you do include the community, like you did, Patricia, as well, when you include the community, um, the chance uh, for exploration and for knowledge, it, it doesn't just double. It, 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 it exemplifies, it grows uh, exceptionally because yes. you go from having one researcher, as you point, down, point out, to maybe having 19, and maybe those 19 are not people you are funding. Maybe there are people who want to help, who are, want to be a part of the technology, who want to be a part of the solution. I think this is very brilliant. It's a very brilliant idea. And something that I think we could learn very much in the U.S., you know, we have an idea that we just put money towards something and it will fix it, right? But the reality is, is if we include the community, we include the elderly, we include, uh, you know, different parts of our uh, nonprofits into our, our, our issues, our, 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 our community, it makes it much more even harmonious, maybe not be the perfect solution, but more harmonious coming together and great greater potential and involvement for the community. I think this is absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, Tom, would you want to share some of your thinking in this area? I know you're a, a, a big collaborator. I'm always looking to cut across silos. And I know you do a lot of co-creation as well. Your integrated humanity is the prime example of co-creation, so. Well, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Patrick. I uh, really appreciated both of these presentations and the, the reaching out, you know, from the university to the community to, um, you know, develop these synergies uh, with all sorts of different stakeholders and practitioners. 
I, I have focused uh, my uh, efforts on students and, and preparing students for moving out of the university, so to speak, and, and into the world of uh, work and, and innovation. Um, you know, part of, part of my concern for many years now has been to um, establish a, a foundation for liberal learning that, um, you know, responds to the, I won't call it a threat, but to the new situation posed by, you know, the robots uh, arriving, right? The, the robots that uh, somebody else is innovating, I suppose, that, that uh, will be replacing many even white collar types of jobs, right? And, and uh, so the, the question is, you know, how, how can our students be prepared for this uh, dramatically different world where, where there's going to be many competing narratives of values and principles that should be followed? And, and many of those are, are purely materialistic and utilitarian and, and potentially dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> to our, our students' futures. So I don't know if you want me to present on my program. I'm uh, re ready to do that. It, I think it would be uh, I, good. I started, yeah? Yeah, because I, right. I think we're coming with a, a very good topics because uh, Roberto talked about technology and his development and uh, Patricia had a great presentation in regard to, to social um, co-creation and development. I think where you're going is from the student Area, I think so. It's very multi-topical, and I really enjoy that. So yes, please. Okay, let me. I, I'm not uh, great with uh, the technology here, and um, is it, does this look all right to you? You yes. can see the slide. Very good. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I, I rather, with some grandiosity, uh, describe what I do as trying to uh, prepare liberally educated students for the 21st century. And surprisingly, right, the, the, the types of uh, arguments and programs that would keep liberal education relevant to today, some of the strongest opposition comes not from the sciences, the STEM disciplines, but from the humanities disciplines that have this, um, I want to say, particular vision of liberal education that, that should be only for its own sake, quote unquote, right? Uh, and, and this business about liberal arts being studied for their own sake and not for some utilitarian purpose I think is profoundly misguided. <laughs> um, and first of all, since we're here uh, with Aquinas uh, Institutes, um, let's see if I can move this over. Right, Aquinas uh, understood the liberal arts as being for uh, a practical purpose. We, we study logic, grammar, and rhetoric so that we can write sentences and make arguments. And of course, those have ulterior practical purposes. And we study the sciences, which are part of the liberal arts. So I mean, this, this is a part of the liberal, liberal education that can easily get minimized, you know, that this is all about the humanities. Well, it's also about the, the quantifiable arts, right? The, the, the practical arts. And moreover, right, Aristotle also understood that we, as composite human beings, right, we, we have intellectual needs, right, we want to know the truth, but we also have practical needs, and we have to live in society. Uh, St. John Henry Newman, right, uh, spoke instead of what he called the philosophical habits of mind that liberal education produce. And those are practical habits of mind that, they, that permit life in society, right? Permit, you know, communication, this equitableness, calmness, a certain freedom, right? An ordered freedom, moderation. These are things, of course, that are sorely lacking, at least in our political discourse uh, these days. But I, I think it's, it's pretty much worldwide that there's 
you know, a, a lack of equ equitableness, right? Being able to see both sides of an argument. So, um, you know, part of Now. And this is this is the problem of the technocrats, you know, the the people we, we had somebody run for president a few years ago who said, just show me the numbers and I'll tell you what we need to do. Well, this of course completely misunderstands, you know, or let's say has an alternative view of what the human person is, as as a, as Aristotle says, a composite human being. So um I, I've created a, a degree program. Of course, it's not for everybody. It's, it's for students who normally would have picked one major in the liberal arts, whether history or English, or maybe one in the social sciences like psychology or, or communications, for instance. Those are very popular majors. So uh, what this uh, degree, which is called Integrated Humanities does, is that it combines three minors, a humanities minor, a STEM minor, and a minor of choice, which um, we have a number of interdisciplinary minors where there's some intentional integration of theories and methods. Uh, uh, and um, I'll show you one that I, I've just proposed now and that uh, I hope will lead to the creation of some other interdisciplinary minors I look at where I'm looking for pioneers, uh, right, from other disciplines. It, it takes people willing to kind of get out of their comfort zone to innovate, to collaborate, right? And everybody's so busy, of course. But uh, the integrated humanities degree relies on, first of all, the University of St. Thomas has a highly developed core curriculum. This, the new core is going to be 45 credit hours. And the courses in that program will be team taught and interdisciplinarily taught from primary sources. So there, there's a, a, a whole different model of engagement with the student, right? Uh, primary sources and the classes conducted with Socratic method, Socratic, Socratic seminars. So there, there's that core. And then the integrated humanities student take one course, it's called University 2301. And it's basically a trivium course. But in that trivium course, they get both theory and practice on a wide range of texts. Where uh, I um, require the students to develop the ability to understand the philosophical content of our readings the philosophical axioms or assumptions behind our readings. And so, so students, you know, learn about this, um, the nature of social communication that depends on understanding, you know, where other people are coming from, right? What paradigms are governing their thinking. This is a, a necessary foundation for authentic dialogue, right? or that equitableness that Newman would talk about. And then at the other end of, of the integrated humanities uh, curriculum is a practicum. And for that practicum, students can do an intern, a service project. They can write a, a capstone research paper if they're going to graduate school, for instance, or they can uh, participate in a study abroad program. And each of those options is designed to engage the student in, in a real world experience, uh, but one that's tailored to their choices and to their directions in life. It's not a one size fits all. And of course, their choice of minors also gives a tremendous range of uh, options. Uh, there's thousands and thousands of combinations, which I'm sure you know uh, you, you understand. Um, just one thing, Tom, I'm sorry to interrupt. We need to move ahead a little bit because we do want a okay. little Q&A at the end. So Very good. I'll just mention this other um, 
The one interdisciplinary minor that uh, is going on the books is called Integrated Social Sciences. And that'll involve uh, integrating philosophy, political science, theology, and the practice of some social scientific work actually from uh, a historical topic. Right? So the, the students will get practice on the social scientific study of you know, how medicine has functioned in society, science, technology, or the family, for instance. Okay. So that, that's been my uh, focus. And um, it's, it's basically on uh, the collaboration within the university that, that I've uh, emphasized. Very good. I appreciate that, Tom. Sorry, we're just, uh, of course, you know, like all, all things as we get excited about our topics, we continue to um, get energized, but unfortunately we're limited by time. One, I would like to circle back with what Roberta was talking about uh, in regard to technology. And maybe if we possible, I would like maybe a comment from each one of, one of us. We've all heard about social change from, from Patricia, uh, her great work that she's doing. We've, we've heard about Roberto in, in technology, and we've heard about Tom in regard to looking at the humanities and integrate them. And, and I think what, what Tom's actually do is co-creating as well in regard to looking at what, you know, the, the programs that are at the university and, and talking to students and asking them, how can we co-create? How can we find new ways to use the humanities? Um, maybe if I can get a little bit, like a couple minutes from each one of you, you know, how can we look at the, all these topics and maybe find a way, you know, to bring them together? How can we bring the technology into the social science and the humanities into uh, technology? I think that might be a very interesting a way to kind of complete this uh, discussion on community and collaboration. If uh, Patricia, if you could maybe share some of your thoughts. Yes, well, thank you so much. Well, truth be told, uh, this has been extremely interesting listening to the different experiences and now be able to summarize what's my takeaway really out of uh, these uh, the three presentations that we've had. Co-creation, I believe it's the topic that we've really been talking about. We can see here th different impacts uh, that stem from co-creation. If we work with collaboration with communities, the diagnosis, which is the first point, is going to be a much better diagnosis. Because oftentimes, I mean, when we know from history, what times is that we were wrong in reading the problem. So if we have a joint diagnosis, we have fewer possibilities of misreading the real problem. That's the first thing. Secondly, and I think that we heard that uh, from Roberto's and from Thomas' presentation too, this has to do with ownership. When we co-create, there's also a larger possibility that we will feel a part of it and that the solutions that we come, that we come to through innovation have more likelihood of sustainability. So co-creation is truly important so that we all feel that we can build something that will last in time because we all feel like a part of it. There's uh, ownership there. And from Thomas, social communication. That's an interesting topic because it's not only talking about the problem, but also socially communicating so that everything can be truly understood, can be disseminated. And I believe that that is extremely important. And lastly, in closing, I want to talk about how this is, for me, cross-sectional. For co-creation as an institution, we cannot be over the community. Well, well, working with communities implies working as peers. It's not that we are higher intellectual beings and uh, application is down here. No, we have to work at the same level. That's the only way we can really have co-creation. So that's the synergy that I think we can come up with after having seen the three presentations. Perfect. Thank you very much, Trisha. Roberto? Well, I think that's quite a summary. What, what can I say? How can I add anything to that? I totally agree. And one thing that's important 
important to include in this analysis or in this conversation is that it has to be interdisciplinary, the integration of different knowledge. And in this sense, I think that one of the things that I went by really fast uh, is that in each of these projects, uh, as new players come in, there are new researchers and also new institutions from different disciplines that start joining us. We work in the, in, in the lab with lawyers, specialists, obviously, well, in law, and also, but criminal law, forensic law, with forensic medicine too, also with experts in criminalistics, psychologists who work on the social aspect from the psychological point of view, especially everything that has to do with cyberbullying, cyber violence, grooming, even pedophiles, or the vulneration of the rights of the elderly. And here, communication is critical teachers and students, researchers from the School of Journalism, everyone has been joining these projects. And this uh, interdisciplinary approach uh, and therefore interdisciplinary knowledge uh, is important because that's one added value and it gives a hallmark, an institutional hallmark to the projects that we develop and it really truly facilitates the dialogue with the rest of the actors and the, and the community as a whole. So we engineers are not very good at communicating in general, so it's often difficult for us to really create rapport with the community. So this uh, liaison as a uh, counterpart, as someone who can have a more... Um, Lang a more daily language that can translate te technological knowledge uh, into simple words uh, becomes a key player in the whole process. So this whole co-construction of knowledge where we integrate different knowledges uh, at an equal level, at a genuine uh, empathetic uh, level is critical. And in the case of uh, technology, it's really no, no, no different. Patricia, I agree. You had an excellent summary, and I agree with everything that you had to say. Thank, thank you very much, Roberto. And we just have like one, uh, like one minute left. I'm sorry for the shortness, uh, Tom, uh, but you're always very good at brevity. So I'll leave leave you the, the last uh, minute to, to to comment on what we've seen. Well, thanks. Uh, congratulations to the other summarizers. Um, I, I would just uh, say that. Thinking philosophically is not the preserve of professional philosophers, right? But it's it's uh, the the common condition of the human person, right? Uh, we we seek the truth, and yet if we're not looking for the those common principles, right? It's very hard to co-create, let alone construct anything of lasting value. They're very well said. I think I think there always has to be some common language, common communication, and common understanding. I think that is the thing when we look at all of the presentations, it's this search for this common communication language that we're all in pursuit of. I want to say to uh, all of our panelists today, I'm very honored in having you, Patricia, Roberto, and Tom, you are all elegant and, and beautiful in your, your fields and very, uh, really very appreciative of you sharing uh, what is going on? I think we I learned so much today. I think uh, my head will need to grow a little bit larger uh, to, to fill all the knowledge, but thank you so much. And to Roberto Lafontaine, thank you so much for being our honors guest. I know we, I'm looking forward to seeing you a little bit later, but to thank you so much, of course, for helping facilitate this as well. And in closing, I just want to thank you all. Sí, gracias a ti. No, no, thank you. Sorry, there is something that I wanted to say. There's something important that we have done today, really, and that is sharing knowledge, but also is just simply staying in touch. Patricia, Roberto, Tom, you have different stands. You have different positions there. We have here faculty. We have here leaders. But why can we not do things together amongst us? Just as we've shared our knowledge, 
we can also do other things together. That's my invitation to you all. Thank you so much. And in one more hour, 12 o'clock Houston, 3 o'clock uh, Chile, we will have another panel on on uh, policies and innovation. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Roberto. Thank, thank you, Tom. And especially, thank you, Patrick, for, for your idea and for this wonderful moderation that you've 